Hey friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. I'm Brandilyn Daly, and today I'm bringing you along as I change the bulb, also called a lamp, on my Epson UST projector. There will be a blog to go along with this video that you can find at dailysewsandstuff.com. The link will be in the description box below. I will have some affiliate links to eBay and also to Amazon, um, and those will be found in the description box below. Those don't cost you any extra, but they do kick back a little bit to me, which is helpful. As we turn around and look at the UST projector, you'll also see that my short throw is missing if you've been following along for some time, um, but the mount is still partly there. I am in the middle of working on the short throw video, finally. And so hopefully that will be out for you guys um, in the next month or so. But you know, my UST conveniently <laughs> uh, had the bulb go out. And so I thought it would be a really good time to video that and show you guys how to solve that problem. I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but it's very noticeable in real life. My projector, my lovely UST projector that has been my mainstay for the past year, is starting to flicker. I got a great tip to check the filter. Now I've already ordered the new bulb and that's definitely happening no matter what, but we can check the filter anyway. Honestly, it's really not that dirty. Uh, it's all vacuumed out. Honestly, I don't notice any difference. Like I said, it didn't seem that dirty to begin with. We're gonna put it back in. Close it up if I can reach. Turn it on. Honestly, if anything, it's worse. So, definitely replacing the bolt. So I have opened Amazon and eBay. I'm signed into both and I'm just going to search for the bulb that I need um, in these two search engines and see what we come up with. So I'm gonna search for an Epson or I'm gonna have to click on it to be able to type. Let's try that again. Epson uh, 595 WI bulb. Look, it's like right there. I think for most of us, myself included, it will be much easier just to swap, swap out the lamp than it will be to replace the bulb. Editing Brandilyn jumping in to say two things. Number one, I do not fully understand any of this, but I think from my limited searching that a bulb is just actually that actual light bulb and a lamp is that entire housing. And swapping out the entire housing is much, much easier and preferable to trying to change the actual light bulb. So think about that when you're searching. You want to look for a lamp. You also, number two, want to search for your projector's brand name and model number. For me, that's an Epson 595. But whichever one you're looking for, make sure that the lamp that you choose has your projector listed as compatible. So we're looking at about um, 60, 55, so $80. About half what I paid for my projector. Um, this one is a much cheaper one, but if you look at it, I don't think it's gonna work with my projector. Especially that bulb looks a lot smaller, the whole housing looks different. I'm thinking that's, that, that's not it. So there is and in this one too, like this says it's for a Brightlink Pro. Um, that looks very different from that. And this one specifically says the 595. All right, let's go over to eBay and see what it looks like over here. Epson 595WI lamp. Okay, this says a genuine OEM Epson. Um, it says that it will be for mine, it's only $40 and free shipping. That's not bad. OEM means basically, uh, I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but it's like, this is the one that was used when it was made. Like if you buy an OEM car part, it is the genuine part from the manufacturer. Um, so that is good to know. Here is one we could buy 
the whole thing, including a wall mount, which the wall mount you can make work, but isn't super helpful. But there actually are some, some, some accessories and stuff there for $300 plus $40 shipping. Hmm, not what we want today. Here's a genuine OEM lamp. Uh, it's refurbished, it says, so that means somebody probably took the bulb and replaced it for $35 free shipping for returns. I kind of like the way that one feels. We'll, we'll see in a minute. Um, this one that's just the bulb, um, see how we would have to do some connecting and some stuff. Um, it's a little bit cheaper, but, but again, not what I am planning to do. Uh, this one is a genuine OEM. It's about $40 in free shipping. So it looks to me like eBay is my better option for um, price and for getting those OEM parts, which I don't know how much of a difference it will make um, on this projector, but generally it's, it's the right thing to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. It's $35, which is um, a really good price. It's from a top rated seller, free shipping, free returns. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one and we will see what happens when it comes in. Stay tuned. All right, friends, the new bulb is here. The housing does look a little bit worn. I do think that it was previously used. Uh, it does say it was refurbished. I'm guessing what that means is someone else replaced that, that bulb right there. And then this whole thing, which is a lamp, um, we will just swap out. So this is my Epson USD projector. This particular one is the Epson 595. All of them are going to work somewhat similarly, but there might be a few differences as you dig into the guts of your projector. As always, you can ask questions below in the comments. You can go to my Facebook group, which is um, Daily Sews and Stuff Friends, or you can ask in the Projectors for Sewing Facebook group and there are a lot of knowledgeable people there who will try to help you. So on this side right here, you have the door that you open to get to your um, filter and to your focus lever. On this side, you can see there's kind of a little door here. It doesn't slide open the way others do. Um, it doesn't slide off like that does. It doesn't have a little catch like this one does but it's there you can see the outline of it um and it is held in there with a screw so i'm going to grab a screwdriver and loosen that up what did i do with my screwdriver there we go didn't lose the screw um so as i take that off there actually is a little bit of dust and yuckiness in this so I'm definitely going to clean this before I put it all back together. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and clean it before I pull this old bulb out. That way it'll be nice and clean for the new bulb as I put it in. It is all dusted the best I can do for right now. All right, so I lifted up this bar and now I'm going to unscrew this screw and this screw. And in theory, this should just gently pull out. Maybe I haven't gotten these loose enough yet. If you are looking at my dress today, this is a me made dress. This was, oh, there it came. This is the Little Lizard King Laurel dress. It's a free pattern. Um, all right, so let's look at this a little bit more carefully. I don't know if it's indicative of it burning out but this uh, metal around this bulb has a definite tarnish to it that the other one doesn't. Um, all right, that has been removed. I'm setting it far away. That's the old one. I'm gonna grab my rag and just very gently, because I don't wanna mess up any internal parts, get this little bit of dust that I see right here. All right, and now this one closer to me is the new one. And I'm going to gently put it in. So this little flap is already out. I'm going to use it to hold it and gently push it back in. I'm going to kind of push until it clicks a little bit. 
kind of just quits going for me. And then I'm going to screw these screws back in. Hmm, it doesn't feel like it's biting on much. There we go. Oh, a little bit more. It, it needed to be pushed in a little bit more. And now that screw is biting. Okay, and I'll get the top one. And that's in all the way. And then I'm gonna gently press this bar kind of back and down until it clicks into place. Just to show you a little bit closer on this old one that I'm not so worried about possibly breaking. This comes out and get can gently pull it. And these two screws right here are the ones that I pulled, that I unscrewed and then re-screwed for the new one. And this bar will just gently snap back into place. All right. So I think what we'll do uh, is we'll go ahead and screw this cover back on. This cover seems like it has a bit of a heat sink on it or something. I'm not entirely sure what that is, uh, but it seems like it could be important. So we're going to go ahead and screw that back on and then uh, we will turn the, the projector back on and see how it goes. So I'm going to turn it back this way a little bit and hit that power button and we'll see what happens. Move these things out of my way. Oh yes, the flickering is gone. Here, let's turn you guys. The flickering is totally gone. And in fact, I'm pretty sure it is brighter now than it was before. That is very exciting. Now, something I'm going to do, which is not at all necessary, but it will be a nice thing to go th run through, is I'm gonna go ahead and reset the bulb hours on this so that uh, we'll keep track of how long it takes me to run through them. So let's go to menu. I'm just using the remote here. Um, and I will go down to reset. And I will say reset lamp hours. Yes, I'm sure I want to reset the lamp hours. And now if we go to info, it says that we are um, at zero lamp hours. So this will show me exactly how long it takes me to go through a bulb and how many hours it lasts me. Hopefully it is quite a lot. So if you saw the video before, I'm not sure if you can tell a difference or not, but I am telling you in person that is a night and day difference. It looks sharper, it looks clearer, it looks brighter, and it is not flickering. So yay, mission accomplished. And that was super easy. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this little adventure. The bulb is replaced, the projector is all better now. So I am going to plug it back to my computer, get it recalibrated because I've certainly moved it out of place more than once now. And I'll probably record a little bit of that so that I can show you the quick corners option and so that I can just do a short video that's focusing on that calibration and not all the other things uh, that go in the UST video. I also, as I said, I'm working on that short throw video and that comparison video is still yet to come. So subscribe, stay tuned, and I will bring you more protector sewing content as I am able. Thanks. Bye. Keep watching my videos, like, subscribe, and comment.